just testing is, is not complicated, right? But you just have to be careful um, because we are at a point in the course where you know a lot of maths, right? Any kind of maths that you already know about that can be construed in an arithmetic way can be brought in and um, you need to think back to your log So let's, let's do the first one, it's just a log. Uh, you do the first pair and you get a difference. You do the second pair and you find that the difference is four, which is not the same. Okay, so all you need to state, this is not an AP, is to state that these are not equal, right? So this line is my logic line. This line is my, it doesn't fit the condition I want, right? So I would say, therefore, please answer the question. The question doesn't say, go through a bunch of equations. The question says, test. So you say yes or no. Right? So give me an answer at the end. Conclusions will become even more important when we go to our next topic um, in calculus. But here, also important. Now, when you have a look at this guy, the skeleton of the proof um, is exactly the same. The skeleton of the method is exactly the same. We're going to do a pair, a pair, and then show or not show equivalence. Right? But of course, because here you have logs, You need to recall that you shouldn't just pack up and go home after writing that, right? Your log logs tell you what can you do, how do those two interact? And it's a show question, by the way. Well, it's, it, it's, a, it's a test, so therefore you have to show. What can I do with these? Log two. If log base three of... Now, the reason why it's two, the reason why it's two, is because when you combine logs in this way, when you subtract, you divide these two terms in here. Right, so I'm going to put in that 10 over 5 to show I knew what's going on. Um, I just chucked into my calculator, I looked at a paper next to me or something like that. And that's where log base 3 of 2 comes from. And I'm going to rehearse that for the next step. Um, to 3. Oh, crud. I forgot to put something. That good, huh? <laughs> now, keep in mind, I have no idea what log base 3 of 2 is. I mean, I assume it's... Something like one and a half, I don't know, okay, 1.6, something like that. But I don't need to know what its value is to know that the two values are the same, okay? I can still get this same result here, okay? And so therefore, I have this and the rest of it will be the same, right? I will show that yes, they are equal and therefore it is an A and B. Sorry, like say that again. So kind of like a minus, but then long it becomes divide. So I didn't think you'd do that, so I did change your face. Oh, and sure. Then I actually calculated. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You if you if you want to actually calculate it. That's still fine, it's a rather longer way to do it. Yeah. But you'll still get this result, won't you? Like as in you'll still get this equivalence. Yeah. Okay, so it's fine. Okay. Does anyone have questions about the, the testing? Okay. The testing, like I said, often comes <coughs> before you use one of these properties. You have to say, yeah, it's an AP, before you can say any AP stuff about it. Now, question four, I know some of you have started it. Again, the big clue, I mean, we're in a, we're in a lesson about APs, right? The positive multiples of 11, this is a sequence, right? And it, the particular kind of sequence is it's an AP with first term Zero. 11, well, first, well, P positive multiples? Uh, right? First term 11 and Pop common difference 11. 11, right? So therefore, now that I know what A and D are, I can immediately write what the formula for every nth term is. Okay. Now, when you have a look at this, I'm going to say T of N equals first term plus N minus one lot of the common difference. Okay. But it becomes pretty obvious, right? You've got an 11 here. And then you've got to take away 11 there, like they're just going to cancel out, which is like, oh, yeah, actually, that's not that surprising, <laughs> okay? But what do I do with this is the question, okay? Where am I, how am I going to use this, right? Well, what I want is I know there are some number of terms that are between 500 and 2,000. Let me say that again. There are some terms, there are some terms that are between, between? 500 and 2,000. And do you have to write it this way? No, of course not. But this will probably be the quickest way, the most direct statement, T 
to get to between 500 and 2,000. Okay. Now, being that I know exactly what so T of you, N is. Um, yes? so do you have to add the condition on the side that N is an integer? Um, you mean this? Yeah. I'm kind of, once I've stated it, like just like these things, I can kind of assume them. Okay? Um, but obviously, it will come into a play in a second when I get some fractions out of this. Okay. Yeah. Now, before I go ahead and solve, what does your intuition tell you about how many answers, roughly, you're expecting? Okay. Now, 2,000 take away 500 is 1,500, right? Now, dividing by 11 is awkward, but a number that's close to that, which I can easily divide by, is 10. Now, how many multiples of 10 are there in 1,500? About 150, right? Now, this is multiples of 11. They come out just a little less frequently, so I'm going to probably expect a bit under 150. That's what my intuition is telling me. And when I get an answer at the end, I'll see if I'm on the right track. So, I'm just going to divide by 11, right? What am I going to get? I'm going to get some mixed numerals again, right? What have I got? You get a 45 times 45. 45, and that sounds like Recurring four, 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 five months? I know, but I want a fraction. Oh. Just because oh. I'm lazy, I don't want to write dots. Yeah. It sounds like four elevens, right? Four elevens? Five elevens. Five elevens, right? Seven elevens. I think it's five elevens. Seven elevens. I wrote it down. Yeah, it's five, okay. And then the other one, I'm going to get 181, and if I have my numbers right, nine elevens. Is that right? Okay. Now, again, what's great about this is that to answer this question, you can't simply machine a formula. You have to take this result that we got from the formula and interpret it, okay? So how do I get from this to an answer? Right. Think about it for a second. Yeah. Um, how many terms in my sequence, my AP that I'm interested in, how many terms are <coughs> under 500? Look at the inequalities. How many terms? There are 45 terms. 45 terms with no bits, right? Less than 500. How many terms are less than 2,000? 181. 181, 181, right? Because the 182nd term will not meet this condition. It will be over 2,000, right? 181. Wait, so aren't there 45 terms larger than 500? No. no. Let me explain why after I write this down. Uh, why is it that there are 45 terms less? Because if I think about this, right? The first term on this side, to break this inequality, the first term is term 45. Right? Term 46 is inside. Term 45, outside. Right? So if term 45 is outside, 44 is outside, and 43, and 42, all the way down to 1. Right? So all the way over here, I have term 1 here, all the way up until term 45, which of course is 45 terms. And then the next one will be inside my nice region. Okay. Alright, so if I have this many less than 2,000, but I need to take away these ones because they're not more than 500, then it's going to be 181, take away 45, which I think is 136, which matches our intuition of something less than 150. We're in the right ballpark.